Is the Intel Arc A770 discrete GPU comparable to the NVIDIA RTX 3060 Ti? That's a question that many other creators have already answered, but we'll do our own take on this topic. Okay, so here's the deal. For those who are shopping for an RTX 3060 Ti at this point in time, you are in luck because you can choose between NVIDIA and also Intel. This is the Intel Arc discrete GPU that is actually available in the market right now. And they are more or less around the same price, but the Intel Arc is generally slightly lower in price. So we'll start off by doing some benchmarks. So let's take a look at the Blender test first. We're using the Splash Art done by Nicole Morena and we'll isolate all of the other APIs and we'll only use the GPU only. So for the Intel Arc A770, we can use something called one API and it takes about 18 seconds to render the entire image. For Nvidia, we can enable both CUDA and also Optics and it takes about only 13 seconds to complete the entire render. That is to be expected since Blender and Nvidia plays along very nicely. However, for other apps like Premiere Pro, there is a lot of effects that are GPU accelerated and that can speed up the whole editing process flow better but ultimately the rendering times when we do our usual 2 minute video benchmark uh, it doesn't have any difference at all so I would say they are both pretty much comparable here. Now for Handbrake there are a lot of codecs to choose from and I'm specifically looking at the AV1 codec. AV1 seems to be the future as well since it is also royalty free and made for the web. We'll take the rendered video from Premiere Pro just now and use it as our example here. Now, since our test bench is now using an Intel processor, we can show you that why GPU encoding and decoding are so important. Here we can see that it takes 5 minutes to encode while using the SVT AV1 codec that actually utilizes the CPU instead. And it is extremely slow. And then when we switch over to AV1 QSV, it uses the GPU instead. Now, this cuts down the time all the way down from 5 minutes to only 37 seconds and that is amazing. How about the NVIDIA RTX 3060 Ti then? Well, it is actually impossible to test it since the RTX 30 series only supports AV1 decoding but not encoding. We'll have to upgrade to the RTX 40 series dedicated GPUs for AV1 encoding. And the prices of those GPUs are very high. <laughs> For V-Ray though, that works better with NVIDIA since it has RT cores and it does the ray tracing and whatnot. So it is just plain faster on NVIDIA cards for V-Ray specifically. Of course, I do play games on the side as well. However, I'm not going to talk much about gaming here because there are way too many other creators talking about gaming already. So we'll do a quick synthetic benchmark here and funny enough, everything is better on the Intel Arc A770 except for Speedway. What I'm baffled by is actually Port Royal Benchmark. Actually, for some reason, the Intel Arc is better in this case. Uh, why it baffled me is actually because, you know, Port Royal is heavily dependent on ray tracing. For some reason, Intel scored better. So through all of these simple tests, is the Intel Arc A770 good? Well, as a fellow creator, I'm gonna take a look at it from a creator's standpoint. I primarily use it for Premiere Pro, Photoshop, OBS, and Handbrake, and it might not be useful for now unless I create an ingest station to take all of our camera footage and convert them to AV1 before I start editing. Now, unless cameras start to actually record using AV1 standards, I don't think I'm going to do that as of now, so can't fully take full advantage of this GPU yet. Now, for streamers though, there are actually services that support AV1 codec now, and that can increase your streaming quality while maintaining at the same bitrate. So you wouldn't stress your upload speed that much and your viewers get to look at your face prettier, I guess. So for gamers though, while the benchmark scores of the Intel Arc A770 is indeed better overall, Nvidia has another trick up its sleeve and that is to do with their tensor cores. With those cores, you can enable features like DLSS and obviously, once you have DLSS turned on, then the NVIDIA cards will perform better overall in games. But is the Intel Arc A770 currently the highest-end Intel Arc GPU worth the price? I'll say it kind of depends on what you want. For creators, this is a strong compelling option. If you don't use apps like V-Ray or Blender, then I think this is an amazing card. 
For gamers though, it's a bit complicated. While the Intel Arc A770 can indeed run games with respectable frame rates, NVIDIA's DLSS is very beneficial if you're gonna play games at a higher resolution. But this doesn't stop the fact that Intel, a newcomer to the discrete GPU market, they managed to wow a lot of people and that is just incredible of them. So that's it, that's a very quick look of the Intel Arc A770 GPUs against Nvidia's current offerings. Exciting times ahead, but with Raja Koduri leaving Intel after just one generation, I'm not sure how's the future for Intel Arc GPUs.